Hey, welcome to the Guaranteed Retirement Guy Show. So I'm John Stevenson, and I want to give you some tips about what to ask before buying an annuity, because these are really, really important things to consider. So, all right, so there's four questions that I want to go over, and then I'll kind of give you a list. Uh, of, of what to ask on top of these. But really, there are four main questions that we need to at least think about first. Okay, the first one is, what kind of annuity is it? Okay, there's, they're really in three separate categories. You've got, you got fixed annuities, which are the MIGA. They're fixed rates, you know, earning four or 5%, at least they are right now. Okay, those are kind of like CDs. So then you got the fixed annuities and you got the indexed annuities. Index annuities are just that. They're tied to an index. Okay, they give you growth depending on what the index earns. And then, of course, they protect you against market loss. Both, both the fixed annuities and the index annuities protect you against market loss. Um, just one of them's fixed, just gives you a fixed rate of return. And the other one gives you whatever the index earns, which over time typically earn a lot more. And you can also attach an income rider to these. And so if you're looking for guaranteed income, the index annuity with an income rider is typically what you'll want. All right. The third category is variable annuities. And variable annuities are not my specialty. And variable annuities are, I think, more suitable for people who are willing to take on a lot more risk and also willing to pay a lot more fees because the fees can be pretty large. I've seen them go as high as 6% or even more. So it just really depends on what your risk tolerance is. I would say the happy medium, the hybrid, is the index annuity right in the middle. Gives you a lot more growth than, than just a fixed annuity would. Uh, gives you a lot more potential growth. Now, obviously, it's tied to an index. But it also gives you a lot more guaranteed income than you'll get from anywhere else. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, obviously, you've got different uh, immediate annuities. Um, you've got fixed immediate annuities. And then you've got deferred annuities. Okay. So those are the other two. So so number one is uh, obviously what kind of annuity it is. And then it talks about, you know, fixed um, immediate versus deferred. And then you just got to ask yourself, do you need income right now or do you need it later? Because different annuities work better um, depending on how soon you want to take the income. Okay. Um, all right. So number two is how much will the annuity cost? Well, I would say the cost is usually just the income rider fee. And that is usually tied to an index annuity. Index annuities can come with no fees as well. Okay, so a lot of times people ask, well, are there hidden charges? No, if there's no fees, there's no fees. But there are some annuities that will charge 1% rider for, uh, for the income. Some go as high as 1.5% or even 2%. So it just depends on the cost. Typically for MIGA, you know, fixed annuities, you know, give you a fixed rate of return of 4 or 5%. They don't have any costs. I would say the cost for those is if you had, if you surrendered. So if you surrender these annuities too early, then you could have some costs associated with surrendering it. But if you don't surrender it, like, like if you just need it for guaranteed income or you just need it for a rate of return that's fixed and you don't need to touch the money, then you're never going to ever actually realize those costs. Okay. So that's something that we can go over as well. Um, number three, what are the trade offs? Well, here's the thing when you've got a benefit, it is usually a trade off. So if I have an index annuity and it earns 10%, in a given year, the real stock market, because I'm not invested in the stock market and the index annuity, I'm just following an index because the insurance company is buying call options associated with that index. You're not actually in it. That's what gives you that market protection. Okay. But if I want to be in the real raw market and that market goes up 12%, I'm missing out on two, you know, 2%, right? I'm making 10%. I could be making an extra two. So those are the trade offs. But on the flip side, you also have guaranteed that you'll never ever um, have your money go down due to a market crash. So that's the trade-off. The trade-off is your money is completely protected. And on top of that, you might have guaranteed income and you might have a roll-up rate that's giving you 7 or 8% guaranteed for the purpose of determining income later on. There's a lot of benefits. There's a lot of benefits for that trade-off of earning less money in the market. And if you're at retirement age, do you really want to be in the market? Do you really want to be subjecting your, your funds to all the risks that you were okay with when you're 30? Probably not. And so if you want guarantees, then the trade-off is usually worth it. Okay, number four, how will this annuity work with my other income? Well, 
if you got social security income coming in, and let's say you took that social security income early. Okay, so if you take it at 62, between 62 and 67, because usually most people I work with, the full retirement age is 67. Okay, so if it's anywhere between that and you take social security early, then social security is going to, the social security administration is going to tell you, you are restricted on the amount of income that you can earn without us withholding your social security check. So what that means is, is maybe they're, maybe they're saying you can make more than 30,000 a year, for example. Uh, otherwise, if you make more than this during a given year, then we're going to withhold your check. Uh, they're not going to take it to Vegas and go spend it. They'll give it to you later once you hit 67, if that's your full retirement age. But they're not going to give you your full check. Uh, they'll withhold it. So anyways, if you plan on supplementing your income during age 62 to 67 with an annuity, then they might withhold your entire Social Security check. Which in that case, if I was you, I would just wait to take the income from the annuity you know, fund the annuity, let it grow, and then also wait to take Social Security and just take them at the same time, because then it doesn't matter. Uh, and if you wait to if you wait to take income from your annuity, uh, you know, after your full retirement age, if it's sixty seven or later, then it doesn't matter. You can make a million dollars a year, and they're you know they're not going to withhold your Social Security check. So just remember that when you are combining your pension income and your Social Security income, um, typically. If you got annuity income on top of that, you know they're going to combine all that together. Uh, unless, of course, it's a Roth. If it's a Roth, then they don't include that as income. So we can talk about that. Um, that's where booking a call with me comes in play, and you can ask me more questions. All right. So there's a just a checklist I want to go over real quick um, as far as considering purchasing an annuity that you need to remember. How are agents like me compensated? You should ask, right? You should ask how I'm compensated. I'm paid a commission and it's, and it's paid from the insurance company. They don't pay it out of your money. They pay it. So that's how I'm compensated. Other, other advisors might be compensated through a fee, which means you'll have to pay them a fee before they sell it to you. So it just depends on, on, those, on just how it works and how they have it set up. Another question to ask is, do you, uh, other, do you offer other options for retirement income? Okay. So my answer would be is, well, yes. I mean, we have... All of the annuities, they're all, you know, I, I don't like to hide any annuities. I'll show you all of them, even if even the ones that pay me less commission, I'll show you those as well. Um, and then if you're if you're a young client, and when I say young, I mean 50 and younger, and you want to maybe put money into a life insurance policy and you want to do that for 15 years or more and you want to overfund it, then we can talk about TFRA options. Those are called tax-free retirement accounts, and you use uh, a life insurance policy to do it. So you set that up in a way um, to to uh, to build tax free income later on. But you have to set it up right. All right. What is the insurance company's financial strength rating? Well, that's important. Most of my clients want an A rated carrier, A rated versus a B rated, or even as you know, one that's not rated at all. In order to become rated or highly rated, you have to have uh, a certain financial strength and stability, and so that's important. Uh, another thing is, what fee should I expect to pay with this annuity? And again, that comes down to what what kind of annuity it, uh, you know is it? If it's a MIGA, a fixed annuity, then there are no fees, unless of course you surrender it. Then you got surrender charges, but but there is no fees. And an index annuity, you don't have fees uh, either. But if you want it for income, then typically you want to pay another one percent uh, per year for income, and and that really it's totally worth it because. You might pay $100,000 in fees over your lifetime, but it will give you another $500,000 in income. So it's totally worth it when you look at total ROI. It's absolutely worth it. So it just depends on what they're for. I have no, I have no problem with fees as long as they give you a direct benefit and it's worth it. Okay. And then let's see, what happens to my money when I die? I get this question a lot because people want to know that that money's not going to stay with the insurance company, which is really important. You might... You might have a half a million, you might have a million bucks saved and you're turning on income. And let's say you only have income for five years and you and your spouse are killed in an accident and you don't want the income to just, you know, yeah, the income's going to go away, but you don't want the money in that account to go away. And so whatever is left in that account, whatever you have, you have not used up, that goes to your beneficiary. So if it's your kids, great, goes to your kids. It avoids probate um, if, you, if you name them as a beneficiary. So it's pretty easy. Um, 
if you take that income, let's say you put a million bucks in and you take 70,000 a year for the next, I don't know, 30 years. Well, probably at the end of 30 years, there probably won't be any money left in there. There might be, but there probably won't be, at least from my experience. Um, typically the income, the, the value of the account could run out before your income runs out. So the income never runs out. The income is guaranteed and it goes forever. You live to 110, you take out four or $5 million from a million dollar investment. That's guaranteed. You'll get it. Um, but if you die in later years, you're not, <laughs> there probably won't be any money left to give to the kids. So just remember that if you want to leave legacy, there's annuities for that as well. We can set up growth annuities that give a nice size death benefit to them compared to maybe an income annuity where it's just all about income and giving you as much as possible for your money. So that we'll talk about that. There's different ways to allocate that for income annuity versus, uh, versus annuity just for legacy. So, all right, that's it for this video. I hope that was helpful. If you want to book a call and you want to go over these annuities a little bit more, uh, if you have more questions that I can answer, please book a call. Um, the uh, link is below. It goes directly to my calendar and I'll, I'll answer whatever, whatever questions you got. It's usually 30 minutes or less. So happy to help. Um, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.